Welcome to another exhilarating episode of Comic Book Straight Talk. Brought to you from the secret basement inside one of America's oldest comic shops, Tulsa's own The Comic Empire. Now, true believers, open up your ear holes and get ready to have your head filled with the best comic book knowledge this galaxy can handle. That's right, it's time for another nerd overload with Comic Book Straight Talk. Welcome back to Comic Book Straight Talk. This is Dalian, Terry, Kenny, Darrington. <laughs> And we're coming to you live from uh, Star Labs. Uh, I've got a little tour going on. We're checking it out. We have to keep stopping Dow from touching stuff. <laughs> it's not my, not my fault the laser is nice and shiny. And the button's right there. <laughs> it's a big red it's button. It's a big red button. <laughs> Cisco said, don't touch. I want to touch it. Anyway, so uh, kind of uh, going back to uh, one of some older shows. We're just going to hodgepodge of topics. Um... First up, I guess, was something that you'd mentioned. Uh, about the diamond? Yes, yes, about diamond. They had mentioned that they were going to be uh, <coughs> starting their own, where you can order online, and it's called, what was it? It's called the pool, oh, what is it called? The pool di- something. The, the, pool, the, pool, the pool, box, pool box. Pool box. Yes, yes. And just, uh, how's this, how's this going to work? I mean, uh, supposedly in spring, they're going to they're gonna roll something out in the magazine or somewhere to give you an idea of how it's going to work, but... Sorry, I kind of need to touch that. Is this going to be, how is this going to work? Is it going to be a good thing? Is it going to be a bad thing? And what about some of those old school retailers, like that guy at Comic Empire who doesn't have a computer? <laughs> how is it going to work for him? Like our home shop? Um, yeah, I, from what I understand it is, a, you know, a customer can enter the, the comic shop they go to online. At, I guess, I don't know if it's Diamond's website they go to or what. And say, you know, they want, you know, Iron Man number four that comes out in a few months. They can have that, they can order it there, and I guess... It's shipped to the store, or something. It's a, uh, I think it's it's a neat idea, but I don't think it's gonna really be that. You don't think it's gonna be that utilized? I don't think so. Well, what, about you? what do you think? I think it's just one more step Diamond's taking to get rid of retailers. Well, they tried that what a couple of years ago. Them selling digital copies at, at one time. They were, you, you could buy it through the Diamond store. I know that they're using this as an excuse to make it easier for retailers, but I just don't see how it makes it easier for retailers. I think, like you were saying about the uh, the old school stores that don't do computers, I think it's going to kind of be a little worrisome because you know, like you know, like in case with Mike, you know, he orders twenty copies of say Batman. Obviously, I know he orders more, but anyway, and all of a sudden he's got twenty five. Where's it? And he's going to be worried about where these extra five come from. I might be in charge for them. I might, you know. And supposedly, according to them, this is supposedly going to help. Uh, now it won't work unless the retailer is is set up with it. Is set up okay. online. Okay. So, supposedly. I can't remember the program they call it. Oh, okay. What they call the program, but it won't work if the retailer is not part of it. Okay. So. Okay. So that that is good then. So supposedly it's supposed to help with, um, you know how they'll. What what the retailers send in the order mm-hmm. uh, sort of dictates the print numbers. Right. Supposedly, yeah. people that don't order that way can go on the site, and maybe they didn't know about this until the last minute. They can go in and order it. So say you say also on top of that, say you order it. I mean, how's it going to say say this guy has never really ordered anything from Comic Empire in the first place? He goes on the site and he decides, like you said, I want Iron Man, whatever number, mm-hmm. and he orders it and. And the retailer gets this in, and he goes, oh, who, the, "Who the heck is this guy?" I, I don't know. I do know that the retailers are going to be able to reject anybody that tries to sign up on their store, but I don't know how that helps or doesn't help. I don't know. So I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Um, maybe with some newer people, it will. But here's why I don't think it'll make much of a difference. Mike gets you know 40 catalogs in. 40 diamond previews and they sit over there and 90% of his customer base never even looks at him anyway. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why would it, why is this going to make that much of a difference? I mean, I could see like a newer subscriber coming from a shop in a different town mm-hmm. where they did it and then they come in here and Mike says, dude, I don't even have a computer. 
um, I'm not I'm not doing that I'm and that, that customer goes well I'll just go find a shop that does do it I, I could see that ma making a difference but I, I, I mean I think it's kind of a little early for this system because uh, we're st for at least for comic shops I mean if this was right. for something else um, it may be just the right time but for comic shops maybe still a little too early but as as kids that are coming up, growing up, and that's all they know is computers and tablets mm -hmm. and stuff, um, it'll it'll have more prominence. But maybe right now it's just a tad early. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The uh, like you said, you have to sign up. That's fine. And I, I don't I don't see a whole lot of stores doing it because of you know not 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 knowing. Unless they're sent, now they may be sent a email saying, "Hey, Joe Blow in in your state or town ordered this." You know here. what? Joe Blow gets a lot of comics. He does, man. <laughs> also, I mean, another uh, our friend James he pointed out how how's it going to how are we going to know who ordered these comics? I mean, say say you get online and you order it and and they send it and do they do they are they going to is Diamond going to spend the money to get the manpower for everybody to start labeling it? Here's Joe's comics. Here's Kenny's comics. Here's Dow's comics. So when it gets to Mike, he just pulls out this pack and he's got Kenny's comics right there. I imagine it'll say somewhere on the invoice, you know, Batman 50 ordered by, ordered online by Joe Blow. Joe Blow. Joe Blow. Because yeah. Joe Blow gets a lot of comics. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Gets in trouble a lot too. Who hit little Susie? Joe Blow hit Susie. Uh -huh. right. he, he's spitting his gum out on the floor all the time. I know, right? Oh, that's that Bazooka Joe. That's Bazooka that's old Joe. Bazooka Joe. That's old Bazooka Joe. He does that. <laughs> I get too. those two confused. Man, you just uh, you just dated yourself there. <laughs> well. Carrington, do you even know who Bazooka Joe is? <laughs> yeah, she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> don't know who that is at all. Well, Mike used to have his gum up here. What happened to the gum? Everyone bought it, and then Mike never went back to Sam's, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> He's been back to get pop, hasn't he? Yeah. Didn't get any gum, though. <laughs> maybe maybe Mike's tired of chewing it all. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that was just a, just a topic I just thought we'd kind of quickly discuss. I guess we'll know more when they roll it out sometime in spring and see how it works. I mean, yeah. I kind of uh, I like the idea of it. Um but there's certain things I don't like about it as well. I like that at least I could go on and peruse something, or at the last minute I can jump on there because Mike is already sending his order and, and order it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that'd be kind of nice to be able to just, you know, like you said, do that and then know that, hey, you know, I've ordered it. It's going to have a special label or something, and maybe, and then you may actually get what you ordered, you know. And well, I, well, I don't know. I could come in, and I'm the only one that ordered that comic. I ordered it the last minute, and, and uh, Joe Blow comes in off the street. God dang Joe Blow. <laughs> and he's like, I've been looking for that comic there. And, well, Mike yep, yep, sold yep. my comic. <laughs> so, Well, Joe Blow's the number one customer. Yeah. <laughs> he is. When he pulls out cash and hands it over to Mike, yep. he's the number one customer. So, um, what topic have you got now that you'd like to Well, discuss? I just, um, I know uh, this weekend is WonderCon, and... Uh, I wonder about that. I wondered about that, too. Uh, James actually was going to try to go, but he wasn't able to, so... Mm -hmm. um, some big changes coming in Justice League, I know that. Uh, we're getting the weekly, no justice, weekly special, or weekly series, five issues, which will lead into Justice League by Scott Snyder and Bernard Chang, I think it is. Which will be three different teams. We have Dark Side on Justice League, on a team. So Why? stupid. Oh, that is, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> Although you know what, we used to say that about Magneto being on the X Men, yeah. and they weren't awful issues. And apparently, there's going to be a Justice League team. It's going to be a Justice League uh, like Oddity team, which will be out in space, which is what Dark Side's going to be on, and like a Justice League Magic team, which will be led by Wonder Woman with with Swamp Thing will be on it. Justice Did League. Did you Dark. see that new Justice look? Dark. That new look for Swamp Thing as well. The one that everyone's saying is Alan Moore. Yeah, he just looks like a woolly-looking green creature. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, 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 yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. Yeah. He's just got this long, like these long dreads. Not dreads. How can you have Justice League Dark without 
Zatanna mad of Zatanna uh, doing? Actually, Zatanna will be on it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. Is Constantine? No. Is Madame Xanadu? I think you said Madame Xanadu. I think Xanadu, Xanadu right? is, yes. Dead man? No dead man. Hmm. Um, Why is Wonder Woman in charge of it? I don't know. That's Because she's a god. S. Well, S, yes. Is she really, or is she more of a demigod? I don't know. Are they going back to her being Zeus's daughter? I assume so. I guess you could say she was made by magic. Could be. Hmm. I don't know. But she doesn't really have magic powers, though. So. Yeah, it's going to be actually written. The Justice League Dark can be written by James Tenyon. The one that's writing. Uh, well, at least they got a good writer, right? right? Um. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's going to have a uh, yeah, it's going to have Zatanna, uh, Detective Chimp, Man Bat, and Swamp Thing. Well, they've already sold a bunch of them. They got a they got a yeah. chip in there. <laughs> they got a detective yeah. chimp. It's it's it, it's going to be sold. Yeah. I've been trying for the longest time, people, and maybe eventually I'll get it out to a show dedicated to apes and chimps and you know simians alike. It's, go it's gorillas at DC. Gorillas. Marvel has apes. Yeah. DC has gorillas. Yeah. yeah. Kenny's been a very strong opponent <laughs> 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 against that <laughs> subject. We don't like monkeying around. Um. One of these days. Oh my god, that's episode. probably what they'd call it too. DC monkeying around. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, Birds of prey. Ending. Good. Well, it's, no more. Yeah, from what I understand, it's been awful. I haven't been reading it. But, but that, but that team though is going over to do Green Arrow. I know. So you <laughs> oh. take two ju social justice warriors and put them on a social justice warrior character. So maybe it'll work out. For maybe. Yeah. But I read some issues of. Batgirl and Birds of Prey, and I did not think they were good at all. Well, I'm behind on Batgirl, so. And uh, Batgirl they started Batgirl off. Too? Um, I, I'm not sure about that. When Batgirl started off, I was enjoying it, but I got behind on it, so it, apparently it went south. But you're reading the Gail Simone Batgirl still, aren't you? Because you're still year, several years of behind. No, I'm the current one. Oh, current okay. one. Um, also, I guess they're doing a bunch of uh, some uh, young reader books. Well, they've no, been doing the young readers. reader books, haven't they? Well, but With this the, is like the Mother Panic and well, these no, these are going to be like for like young author or young young adults. I'm sorry, young adult readers. You're thinking of young animal. Yeah, yeah that's young the animal. M, that's right, the imprint. Right, right. No, now they're going to be doing young adult right. books. And Frank, what Milk. age? What age group is? Well, look, so they did a young animal, and then they're doing this. What are what? What are the different age? Young groups animal is just the imprint. Young animal is just an imprint. It's, it's it like an offshoot of young, Vertigo. Yeah, it has nothing to do with young adults. Okay. So just, just That's quit, quit, thinking. Think, okay. quit thinking that. So what's what's the age group for these young adults? Tweens, teens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I'd, I'd guess somewhere in the ten to fifteen range. The twilight age, you know, of kids from the. That doesn't mean they're going to be. They can. Well, the, we're, we're going. Well, we're going to get a uh, Carrie Kelly, young young adult book written by Frank Miller. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see <laughs> Frank Miller <laughs> write for. <laughs> yeah, well, when, you, when you finally say that, that's a uh, hmm. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just I. I wonder uh, how he's gonna how he's gonna rein himself in to do that. I don't know. That's gonna be interesting. Frank, you can't have a, you can't have them in a strip club. But why not? Well, never. No, I'm not even gonna go. No, there. Yeah, let, no, 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 no. I went. I went. I took it too far, probably. So. So yeah. Okay. Well, great. Yeah. And we've got Avengers next month. Have you noticed that the hype is starting to get rolling more than it has been? No. It's, it's <laughs> okay. Well, that just <laughs> lead balloon like a Hindenburg. I just, I just saw that the that Chris Evans is done. Supposedly he'll be done after number four. Yeah. So this is three, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It seems so weird saying it's Avengers number three when they were all in Captain America. Right. Three. Mm -hmm. It seems like this is actually the fourth Avengers movie. Right. So, yeah. Um, and what? And you're, uh, you, you're primed to go see it, right? Well, no, I was just saying that it's, it seems like, you know, you've heard, we would hear rumblings about it and everything, and everyone's just, but then it's just like it's getting closer and everything, and we're starting to get hyped up about it. And, yeah. 
looks like it could be pretty good. All right. <laughs> we had a big discussion yesterday, though. That we did, yes, yes. About Alan, Black Panther. Uh, Terry and Alan, one of our... Alan's been on the show before. Alan, that's what I was going to say. He's been on the show. Yeah. Finish my words, sir. Man. I'm not going to push the button if you don't behave. Yeah. Use your words. Use my words. <laughs> Use we he interrupted my words. words. Yeah, we disagreed on Black Panther. Yeah, it was, it was pretty... Uh, de- pretty. Uh, there was a pretty heated debate in well, he at was the heated. comic shop yesterday. I wasn't heated. Uh, you know, Alan, he Alan loved Black Panther. And, and I did, too. I liked it. I thought it was really good. Terry, that's thought it was eh, and well, like Justice League better. I thought it was just okay. I didn't, I didn't, I, it wasn't a terrible movie. It wasn't a great movie. It was, I went there. Some of it I enjoyed. Some of it I thought was The word eh stupid. came out of his mouth, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. Twice. There were some things that were eh about it. But he said he liked Justice League better, so. I did like Justice League better. So that was a As nice bad debate. as Justice League is, I liked it better. I still haven't seen it. Have no plans to. You gotta see it just to see it. I no, mean, it's, I it's 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 good. I don't have. You said you were gonna see Black Panther. I didn't say. I didn't say. Huh? I didn't say you, you said. Didn't you say you were gonna see Black Panther as well? And you said That's you were, what I was talking you're, about. You're, you're, Black you're gonna Panther. be the guy that doesn't ever see Black Panther. I am. I'm gonna be that guy. I'm never gonna see <laughs> so, Black Panther. So you're gonna see Justice League then? Yes, eventually. Okay. When it hits the USA Network, maybe. <laughs> I'm not putting forth any money to see Justice League. <laughs> I watched Star Wars here recently too, the latest installment of Star Wars. And he was, said it's always eh. it, it was okay as well. He said eh to it too. I watched. I he was, liked Justice League better. Sorry. I, I was on like Twitter League. while Ethan Van Syra was tweeting while he was watching Star Wars. <laughs> Didn't sound good. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. So I'm. I'm, I'm maybe, I think. I think the comic book. Movies have kind of they're kind of wearing down now, you know. Well, I, I think people are going to the movies and expecting, you know, like I've said before, like you know, some earth shattering something they haven't seen before, and it's a comic book movie. You get a bag of pop or a bucket of popcorn, you get a drink, and you go be entertained for two and a half hours. Well, it's not rocket I, science. I mean, you just go enjoy the movie for what it is. I think a lot of people are going to the comic book movies thinking they're going to get that feeling that they had during the you know Batman Begins and event in the first Avengers movie mm-hmm. and it's I don't think it's ever going to happen no. again. Well I, I think also a lot of people they go to a they're going to see superheroes so they kind of expect a little earth chattering. Yeah. True. In a sense, but I mean I think hey yeah. Age of Ultron was earth shattering. It, it still was. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally earth shattering and literally sucked. Yes. And, and he never saw that coming, did he? <laughs> but I like that one though. Yeah, there again, it was entertaining. Was I entertained for two and a half hours? Oh, I didn't think yes. the second Avengers sucked. I, I, did, I didn't think it sucked either. Um, I was entertained for two and a half hours during most of the movie. There were certain things I didn't like about it, and one of the things where they lifted that whole. You know, like ground up and the part where the they shattered up. the earth. Yeah, that was <laughs> Terry doesn't like earth shatterings. I do like an earth shattering. It <laughs> just needs not. To, it needs to be properly earth shattered. <laughs> it needs to be properly done. <laughs> so, what other topics do you have on mind? Dad, uh, you looked pretty intense there earlier. No, I just especially looking at that red button. <laughs> that red button was nice. Yeah, Cisco keeps looking at me though. He keeps walking over to look at it. He keeps telling me no. Well, yeah. You distract them. I'll push them. What about you, Kenny? Any, anything uh, unnerving you lately in the comic industry? Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> anything more specific? <laughs> well, it's same garbage every month. Yeah, I want to... Ch- there's nothing really... It's pretty sad when the TV shows are more interesting than the comics. Really? Yeah. I think so. Hmm. So I'm not that interested in most of the TV shows. Neither am I. <laughs> I did see that <laughs> Kristen Ritter said that we, we were not getting a Defenders 2. Because it was like a one-time thing. and so we're I thought she said probably not. Probably not. Okay, well. But I've yet to watch Punisher. I still don't want to see that. And I've yet to watch what I do want to see is the second Jessica Jones. That was good. So I'm behind, I'm, I'm so we all know that. that so. I finally met someone that did not like this, the... Punisher show. Alan didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said he didn't punish. 
Yeah. Heather actually yeah. didn't like it either, but you know, she doesn't. She's not a big Punisher fan. Though, well, so. She's not a big comic fan as a whole, really. No, she's loved all the other ones. I mean, she'll watch them like the day they come out or the next day. You know, she'll just just binge watch them all. But she just she forced herself to watch the Punisher, and she said, "Eh, it was." She pulled a U. She said, "Eh, it's all right." I, I'm kind of skeptical. The reason I haven't watched it is because I'm skeptical because of all the other Punisher stuff that's been out. Is to me has not been that great. Matter of no, fact, most of it's been pretty you bad. You didn't like him in Daredevil? No, he was fine in Daredevil, but I'm talking about like, the Punisher He's movies. Because oh, yeah. of course, his, no. favorite, his favorite Punisher movie is a Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. Out of all the Punisher movies that have been made, that probably is the best. Was he the best Punisher? No, not by a long shot. Uh, the best Punisher has been that little short flick, uh, Dirty Laundry. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that was awesome. So. If you haven't seen that, by the way, go on YouTube. Search for Punisher Dirty Laundry and watch Thomas that. Jane. Yeah. But yet you like that, but you didn't like Thomas Jane as in the movie, The Punisher. And it wasn't it wasn't Thomas Jane's fault either. I just think the story was relatively stupid. I thought the parts if you cut out the parts with John Travolta, I thought that Punisher movie would have been. See, I thought good. he made a good Punisher villain because he was like uh, over the top and kind of you know. Well, well the big it thing made it just, campy though. Yeah. Just bothered me is that the villains could find where the Punisher was at. Just Super easily, but the cops they, they 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 didn't have a clue where the Punisher was at, and it wasn't that hard to find him. I don't think the cops would really care. Yeah. They kind of like Batman. Him, they, yeah. I think they were after him in the movie. They cared or pretended to care. So that's like I mean I think the perfect villain would be Chris Christopherson. And the reason I say because that movie yeah was it Payback with Mel Gibson when <laughs> he just wanted his fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. And. <laughs> He's like, I'll give you two million. I just want my fifteen hundred, you owe me, or whatever it was. You know, and that was just a fun. Movie or to watch. the kid on the bike from uh, Better Off Dead. <laughs> Better Off Dead wants two bucks. <laughs> I want my two dollars. Him and his newspaper boys—they're relentless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Girl Scouts with their cookies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape them. No. Nope. We had discussion also about Paper Girls yesterday. At the shop, uh, Alan and I were talking about it. And I'm just, because I, I told him I finally got caught up. You know, I've read like seven or eight issues of it, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, it's I mean, time travel. I know, and it's just, it's just. But you said you said you wanted to keep reading it, though. Yeah, yeah, I'm still keeping reading it. It's just keeping reading it. Keep reading it. But you took it off your list. Did I? Yeah, probably did. But that's fine. I'm still keeping it. Still reading it, so. Because it just got confusing, though. I mean, trying to figure out, you know. I didn't, I didn't I mean, find it confusing. I don't, think that, I don't find it that confusing, but, I mean, when you start talking about paradoxes and all that stuff, I mean. Yeah. And it's hard to do, it's hard to do good time travel, so this has done a pretty good job of it, I think. Yeah. The fact that it's up to issue, what, 18? Mm -hmm. And I haven't dropped it yet? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Usually with time travel, I'd be done. True. That's why I don't like Doctor Who that much. Yeah, but it's not really time it's not, travel. It's not yeah, really time tra travel. It is, but it isn't. It's right. They don't have to worry about paradoxes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's. They could, I guess, if they wanted to, but they don't usually. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. it's usually just a... He didn't travel through time all that often. He usually likes a period of Earth. Now, did did they ever establish a rule where he couldn't go to the same exact time twice? That once he had been to that time, he couldn't go back. I don't think so don't because think they've, so. they've done it with the uh, the astronaut episode when uh, uh, we're on the beach and uh, it was during the Matt Matt Smith stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that the astronaut ends up shooting him, I think, or right. something. Yeah, yeah. And so he ends up going back to that a couple times. And I want to say he's gone back a couple times to the Roman uh, gladiators, the, the the centurion with the the exact same time. I think so. Well, you can go back to the same time period, but he's talking. Can you be a little bit more specific? The exact same time, the last, the exact same second, the exact same millisecond. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think there's anything that says he can't. No, I'm, I got, I'm, then why I, I'm, does anyone ever die on that show? I'm a little behind on that, but he was also supposed to only have X amount of lives, too. So Yeah, yeah, but that's all been re I don't reset know how they now, so. That was reset in order to save him. Yeah. The, all the power, or all the Time Lords gave 
part of their yeah. power to save him. Oh, okay. So I, I don't didn't know what happened on that, you know. And that's how we got Capaldi. Yeah, that's how we got Capaldi. And that's how we met Capaldi. Yeah, I haven't heard a lot of good stuff about Capaldi, so... I thought he did okay. He was all right. He was a better Cardinal of Richard Lou, though. Yeah, from just from what I have seen, he reminds me of, the, like I said, the first uh, Hartel, first Doctor. Real crotchety kind of Doctor. So. Well, he is, but it grows on you. And Like uh, a mole? <laughs> well, like, a, well, like a cancer. Yeah, we won. Mole cancer. But he's gone now, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. matter. We're getting a female doc. It's all right. Hmm. Which would be interesting to see how that does. Are we going to have a female companion or are we going to have a male companion? Well, he's had male and female companions. Well, true. In the past. I know. He's even had male and female companions at the same time. Okay. But, I mean, usually if the male doctor usually has a female, female companion most of the time. Mm. So I just... Well, the original one had two okay. females and a male. And a dog. The William Hartel started off with his daughter mm -hmm. and uh, then there's the teachers. One was a woman, one was a guy. One was a math teacher. And okay, I'm just saying that since they redid it with Eccleston, I think the know, other one was a history or English teacher, I don't remember. You had Rory and Amy. Right. Yeah. And then you had Captain Jack and Martha. And, yeah. and then and even without Captain Jack, you still had... Um, Teacher, no, the, was, yeah, the, Mickey was that, his that name? Yeah. yeah. But usually, though, it's been or was it with Rose that I don't remember. I think I we know. just disproved you down, bro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we shut you Fine. down. I'm gonna hit the red button. <laughs> Maybe. So. Well, anything else? I'm out of ideas. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of a slow week, I guess. It really has slow, been a slow, slow week. Slow yeah. news here recently. Uh, we will be doing um, some inter couple interviews. We're going to sit down and interview Mike. I'm going to try to, yeah. Try to, yeah. Interview Mike. I would like to, I was thinking, like I had mentioned with you guys, <laughs> doing two interviews with Mike. Mike is, one is just about the history of Comic Empire, history of comics, with his take on it. And then the other one would be, Mike is a big uh, underground comic uh, book guy and talking about the history of underground comics and stuff like that. Yeah. And we're also going to probably sit down with another gentleman, um, Mel, and talk about uh, comics with Mel. So. Local celebrity yeah. radio DJ Mel. Yeah. 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 And maybe some other guests in the future too. Yeah, in the next probably couple months. So. Yeah. Let's see what we do. But, um, then we got a con that's going to be coming up. Yeah, Collector Con's coming back uh, on August uh, 4th and 5th. And so we're kind of uh, going back to the American Legion building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Back to the Port, roots. Back to the roots. Yep. Yeah. Kind of, kind of combine it with kind of a kind of a, a comic show, a comic con slash kind of a little carnival kind of thing outside. Uh, really the kids set up a carnival. Well, I mean, I see, I see well, carnival. Well, I'm not saying like a yesterday. huge. I mean, maybe like two or three booths, like face painting, and maybe some clowns. You know. You can dress as a clown. That's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, Carrington's out. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> Carrington, I'm out. Um, just kind of, just kind of some fun activities that you know everyone could like come come and go to for free. You're talking about like a little table with face painting. Face and painting and maybe some like uh, games. You know, you can play outside. We could um, also th that one I thought was kind of cool. The uh, scavenger hunt thing. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, and, and that would be free. And if you wanted to go into the con, you know, be whatever the con, we'd, we'd charge for the con. That way, if, like, Dad's a big comic fan, but, you know, Mom and the kids aren't. You know, Mom and the kids can go have fun outside at the carnival, kind of doing some things while Dad's in the in the comic show. Just you know, kind of something like well, that. You just kind of get, get, not only get, get painting, the neighborhood do, um, also um, involved. Pedicures and... <laughs> <laughs> they should have the cosplay contest outside. Yeah, in the middle of August. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. would not be a good idea but you would have like the cosplayers out mingling with the people you know out there and you know, it's, it's something to try something new you know I mean it's kind of, kind of fun alright so sounds good yeah so are we gonna get out of here I think so can I hit the red button no please no please no well that's it I think so thanks for tuning in and check back for future episodes let us know um do you have any ideas for future episodes as well?
All right, this is Dal. <laughs> Terry. Kenny. Carrington. I'm pushing the red button. Don't!